Hey everyone, welcome back to Two Minute Tuesday. Uh, I'm gonna try to get this up on Tuesday American time, but I think we might be late. I think we are. It's fine. We're in Sydney. We don't know what time it is. I'm sorry, but you know, last week was on Tuesday, so you guys kind of figured this one was gonna be on Wednesday. We have a very special guest. This is Sir Tom Cantelli. Tom, say hi. Howdy. If you don't know who Tom is, Tom is the uh, most senior starting strength coach. We don't mean by age, by length. So. Ah. Tom, Tom's an OG of starting strength, and uh, I'm fortunate to call my friend and colleague, and we travel together uh, for hetero life partners. Correct. Now, this week's Two and Tuesday is gonna be a little bit different. So, I was thinking, what do I wanna do, what do I wanna do? I did some lip reviews on stuff like sauna and caffeine usage, and I was like, ah, let's, let's do something a little different. I want Tom to come up with a topic that is related to training, health, lifestyle. I don't know the topic. He kept, he kept trying to ask me, like, what don't you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? And I'm like, hey man, I want this to be a surprise. So here's the deal. Tom's gonna introduce the topic, okay? Then he's gonna start his watch. He's got one on. 30 seconds are gonna go by. That'll probably be sped up on the video. Then I have two minutes to respond. So not only is this week actually gonna be two minutes only, this is gonna be off the cuff. This is Tom, Tom is testing. He's could be trolling me, I suppose. It's true. I don't know what he's gonna ask, uh, and we're gonna roll with it. But anyway, greetings from Sydney. Tom, do you have any like final thoughts on this thing? Are you nervous? Not in the least. <laughs> but I feel like if, I am. If I could, uh, if I had a better Australian accent, I actually try it out. But if I were to try, it wouldn't work. No, but you have a great, a great New Zealand accent. You're like a native Kiwi. It's true when I say eeks. Eeks. So, eeks. It's my favorite breakfast food. All right. Uh, okay, so Tom, this uh, and I'll ask, what are we going to talk about today? And then as soon as you finish it, you got 30 seconds, and then you're going to give me a 3 2 one countdown. This is basically a CrossFit wad with uh, intellectual uh, stuff going on. And then yeah, I got two minutes. I got two minutes to, to answer. And I had no idea what I was going to ask you up until about 30 seconds ago. I feel like this is like a magic trick with no like backstory. Sorry, guys. But anyway, all right, let's do it. Um, Talk about pause squats and why you might want to put them in a program. Okay, we're gonna talk about pause squats. same. So reasons I would include them. Uh, reason one, if someone needed a, a variation of the squat that was a little lighter um, in order to generate the correct amount of fatigue and stress uh, during the training week or whatever the period is to drive the adaptation, a pause squat would work nicely for that. So it's usually a little lighter, but not too much lighter. Um, so that works well. Also, if someone had a technique issue that I thought that could be addressed with a pause squat, so for instance, they were always going too low or potentially squatting high, uh, you can correct depth a little bit. If their posture at the bottom of the squat was also compromised, you could use a pause squat for that. Uh, alternatively, if someone's dealing with hip or knee pain or really any lower limb pain, sometimes eliminating that stretch reflex allows them to either train around or train through that injury with, the, with less pain. Uh, per session. So pause squats can be pretty useful there. Um, most of the time I program at two count pause squats, but you can do three count, four count, even five count, depending on the application. Left. In general, I do these beltless because again, the point is to do them with a little less weight than your regular squat. Um, certainly if you get close to a meet, you can throw the belt back on because you want to use, uh, maybe generate, crank up the fatigue. But yeah, pause squats, good variation, very specific, usually doing beltless and uh, respond really well to rep ranges in that sort of five to eight range, that's kind of the money range, three to eight, five to eight, something like that. Dude, oh. you did it with five seconds left. Hooray! Five, really, really, yeah. Yeah. We had a set of five left. <laughs> set of five. Uh, yeah, so pause squats are super useful. I, I use them a lot. I find, um, you know, just Austin and I, our programming is, is pretty similar. We find that there's a pretty good, um, carry over from the pause squat to the regular squat. And instead of, uh, and during our development cycles, we don't just do regular squats like squat with belt 
all the time. So we do the pause squats, very similar, allows us enough variation to, uh, you know, not maybe either overreach or, or sort of um, get a little uh, desensitized to the effect of the squat with belt. So it's kind of a, a little variation without going off the reservation. So something off the reservation would be like a Cameron bar, you know, good morning to chains. It's so non-specific. It doesn't mean that it doesn't help you get stronger. It's just, I'm not sure what the transference is of that exercise to a specific motor pattern like a squat. Um, and I do think that two count or three count pause squat, something in that range is probably generally useful for trainees uh, that are coming off an knowledge progression too. So you can introduce them fairly early on. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that on it, like if I was going to switch somebody to an advanced novice program, very often I'll have them deadlift first on the light day because they get to do the deadlift first, then they're less fatigued, then they get to press or bench as normal, and then they're going to finish with paused squats. Because I think that light squat day, uh, basically what you're saying is you want a little bit less stress, but you don't want to reduce the stress so much so that you're not allowing your lifter to progress. So uh, that's usually my change if I'm going to switch somebody from the standard novice linear progression, I'll have the second day be a deadlift, press or bench, whatever they're, they're, they're supposed to be doing, and then pause squats. Do you use pause squats with your trainees? Rarely. Although I do, I do have to say, uh, <laughs> no, uh, I'm I often use box squats more. Okay, sure. But, uh, actually, I have begun to incorporate them a little bit, and I hate to admit this in front of you because it seems <laughs> it seems needlessly uh, I, I don't know uh, needlessly like being nice, but it may, be, <laughs> it may actually be your and uh, Austin's influence. We're rubbing off on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, then, I've, I've been using them. Uh, I, I've used them some of them myself as well. So I've seen their I've seen their usefulness. I seen it. I seen it. The, the you know that is an interesting question you raised between the pulse squat and the box squat. Like, why not just do a box squat? In fact, you could make an argument that the box squat, since you're actually stopping on a surface, that you don't run the risk of ha- accidentally using a stretch reflex to get you out of the bottom of the pulse squat. Well, you that is true that you do eliminate the stretch shortening cycle provided you don't actually bounce off the box. Uh, A couple of problems with the box squat potentially. Uh, One is that because you actually get to stop and sit on something, it may alter your mechanics in that I can see people sit very far into their hips, uh, for instance, or take a a bottom position that's otherwise, you know, something you could not actually do without a box there supporting you. Two, you're applying another compressive force from the bottom, also on the spine, which I don't think it, you know, mechanically is particularly injurious, but Certainly something to consider there. And then also uh, because you're not forcing yourself to stay so tight at the bottom that you're not actually going down or up, um, I think that it's easier to get a little uh, looser or, or, or relaxed a little bit on the box. Uh, also, you can kind of rock back and forth, which is, again, something you wouldn't really do with the weight. Um, the problem with the pause squat is not pausing. <laughs> you kind of just like slowly like go through your short stretch shorting cycle. Uh, or you pause and then you go down and up, right? Um, or at the bottom, uh, you relax, which again, just relaxing at the bottom is bad. Uh, I've used box squats less, although uh, occasionally people with uh, some lower extremity pain, I'll have them do squats above parallel to a box uh, and like work that box down. Or pins, pins work too. The problem with a box squat is you've got another piece of gear. Yep. And if you want to get below parallel, you then need to spend some time either with a video camera yep. or someone spotting you find it. Uh, I use it actually to try and exaggerate the bottom position for people that don't like to lean over for or sure. people that are moving forward because it, it actually is a useful kind of stopping point. So the, the weakness in the box squat of a potentially strange kind of position can be useful when trying to overcorrect for another deficiency. Yeah, or also for instance, if you have a person who's coming to your gym who's just learned how to squat and they don't want to go all the way down to depth and you want to give them some sort of cue, works way better than a medicine ball. Uh, so good question, maybe when you should use a medicine ball for squat depth? Answer, never. It's, all the time. No, look, the little dinosaur ball looking things uh, are great for many things. They're not good for squat depth. One, they move around a bunch. Two, they're soft. Three, the height isn't necessarily correct. Four, um, <laughs> if someone were to like reach their hips back too far and miss and then you know trip over a round object versus a sturdy, sturdy box. Yeah, uh, so I don't, I don't see a real good reason for that other than they're cheaper and more mobile than... Uh, than uh, Actual boxes. Mobility is important.
Anyway, uh, so yeah, I think we, we've kind of thoroughly uh, exhausted uh, box squats, pause squats in our two-minute Tuesday. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. So maybe next week, if you guys like this, we'll have Tom do this again, but we'll be in Melbourne. Uh, so hey, if you guys like the video, hit like below, subscribe, share with your friends. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next time.